B.J. Serhoff at the plate, who puts one over the right center field fence off of Jared Wright. Third homer of the year for B.J., 3 0. The Orioles, Wright's ERA this season, 6.03. It's 4 3 0s in the bottom of the eighth. Shawan Dunstan on third, Kenny Lofton at second, David Justice at the plate. B.J. Serhoff charging in left field. Great catch, pops up, trying to get Dunstan at home at the plate, but the ball hits Dunstan. He's safe. We're tied at four, which is your score in the top of the ninth. Lenny Webster, who you might remember was on the receiving end of the pass ball controversy in last year's game three, seeking redemption, and he gets it. Plating Mike Bordick with the go-ahead run, but that redemption was fleeting because it's a 5-4 in the bottom of the ninth. Base is loaded. Brian Giles busts out the walking stick on Armando Benitez. We're tied at five. Two batters and two outs later. It's still tied at five. Still base is loaded, and Omar Vizquel with the clutch two-out base hit to wrap it up. Jim Tomei scores 6-5 as your final. It's the Indians' fourth straight win, second straight. Seattle, top four. Ray Durham at the plate. Chai Sox down two zip. Durham rocking a big fat bat to left. Looks like homer number three in the year for Durham, but Rich Amaral not here, not now. Check it out again. Amaral times it perfectly, getting some serious, serious ups to climb the wall and make the grab. Shorty also hitting 304 this year. Bottom five, Ken Griffey Jr. Three for five lifetime against pitcher Scott Ayer Jr. Watch out there, doctor. Y'all don't know nothing about this right here. Griffey, an American League high, 13th homer this year. He had 14 this time last year. Next batter, David Segui. Already one homer on the night, getting his hit on again. Second multi-homer game this year, third of his career, eighth homer of the year. Air, 11 homers allowed, second most in the American League. Mariners win it eight. The wind was blowing out. Always makes for an interesting night. Top of the second, Moise Salou facing Mark Clark. Hits it deep to left. Henry Rodriguez, former Alou teammate in Montreal, robbing his former teammate in Montreal. Bottom of the third, Jeff Blauser now. Sends one at Carl Everett's way. Everett on the run, makes a nice running grab. Top of the six, Rodriguez. He's not going to be one-upped by Carl Everett. Oh, no. Comes in and robs Bill Spires with a running grab of his own. Everett says, enough of this defense stuff. I'm going to do something on offense. And if you watched his lips, he was saying exactly that. Base is loaded in the seventh inning. He takes Terry Adams into right field. Bagwell and Spires score. Everett's hung up between first and second, but Jeff Blauser can't handle the throw. Blauser gets charged with an error. Alou scores on the error. Everett wound up on third. Houston scores five in the seventh, two in the eighth, going to win 10 to five. And who needs Daryl Kyle when you have Mike Hampton? One nothing Pirates. Jose Guillen. Got it. Fourth of the season, a solo shot. It's 2 nothing Pirates. It's 3 nothing in the bottom of the third. Two Pirates on base. There they are for Jermaine Allensworth. There he is. Takes Kent Merker. Down the left field line. Jason Kendall, Kevin Young come on down. It's 5 nothing Pirates. The Pirate defense would help protect this. Ron Gantz facing Francisco Cordova. Allensworth makes a nice sliding grab. Turn a 5-2 lead over to Rich Loisel in the ninth. Against Brian Jordan. Jordan rips one up the middle. Luke Collier comes into your picture. Makes a nice dive and grab. And gets the speedy Jordan worthy of a second look. And Collier on the second look still makes the play. He made the same play again? Oh, the beauty of replay. Francisco Cordova and Ricardo Rincon. Affect the defense? Don't think so. Ron Cooper getting freaky deep in the hole with the socks down two zip. No more Garcia Pera getting freakier. Fires a rocket to first. Mo Vaughn, great scoop. Take another look. Garcia Pera with a 304 average. Nice. Mo, nicer. Cooper held to an 0 for 4 day. Then Nomar again. How about Mo? A 352 average in a nice glove. How about Mark Lemke? Nice glove in a, well, a 156 average. But it's okay. Then John Ballard gets the grounder at third. Throws to Lemke over to Vaughn. Nice stretch for the double play. Bottom seven. Garcia Pera ripping stuff up. Said no more after it about taking Bob Tewksbury off the wall. I don't know if it was a fastball or changeup outside, but it wasn't his best stuff. Darren Lewis scores. Mark Lemke scores. Socks up 4-2. Top nine. Tom Gordon treating Orlando Merced like a dog. Stay. Sit. That's why Gordon's got a 1.93 ERA. Then he sat down Pat Mears, a 317 hitter. Then Terry Steinbach, soft grounder to Vaughn, who flips to Gordon for the final out. Gordon, a big league best 12th save. Sox win at 4-2. Tim Wakefield wins his third consecutive start. Royal starter Hippolito Pichardo left in the sixth inning after a, well, after a split. This bunch got off like that. right off the bat, the bat of Paul O'Neill. 
Three run shot in the first off of John Burkett. Three nothing Yanks. David Cohn had some trouble of his own in the first inning. That's ball four. Cohn takes umbrage, but home plate umpire Mark Johnson would have reason for having a little woozy strike zone because he was woozy himself. He left the game with dizziness. He was hospitalized overnight in the local hospital. He's in stable condition. Top of the fifth, a rare pass ball by Pudge Rodriguez, who's just distressed in the dugout. The Yankees would be up 6-2 in the bottom of the sixth. Juan Gonzalez trying to terrorize the Yankees, as is his want, but Bernie Williams robs him at the wall. And the Yankees win the battle of first place team 7-2. So the Yankees celebrate. Was trying to rally the troops. Bottom seven, eight, six halos. Bases loaded for Garrett Anderson. Anderson representing the Dan Plezak pitch to right center. Three runners will come in and score. Garrett, nice night. Two for five hitting. Angels would go up and lead 11 to 6. Top eight still 11 6. Blue Jays batting men on first and second. Darren Fletcher. Booyah! Drives the Pep Harris offering deep to right for a home run. Fletcher second. Jack of the year. Jays within 2 11 9. Later in the eighth, tied at 11. Troy Percival pitching to Tony Fernandez. Fernandez. Down the right field line. Two run score. Percival blows his first save in 21 appearances. First save since July 28, 97. He's blown. Blue Jays win the game 13 to 11. Toronto went 7 for 14 with men and scoring. Since 94, strikes out Bobby Bow. Dusty Baker likes it and spits. Oral providing some offense in the top of the fifth. Base hit off Brian Meadows. And he's going to be taken off for second. Oral's nimble. Look at this. First stolen base in three years. Seventh career stolen base. Smiles, everyone. And then on the wild pitch from Meadows, Hershiser hustles in from third. All this running. He deserves a night hot, hot towel in the face and an ear massage. That feels good. Mm. Probably could use a back massage after this. Next at bat, the seventh inning, reaches for his lower back. That was it for Oral. I'm fine, he said afterwards. He pitched six innings, no runs, two hits. Still 2 nothing. Giants in the bottom of the ninth. Rob Nen facing his former mates with the bases loaded. Jeff Kent can't handle it. Edgar Renteria and Mark Kotze score to tie to two. To the top of the tenth we go, and Rich Aurelia busts out the whooping stick. He had a two-homer game in Atlanta on Sunday. This is his third homer of the year. He's on a roll. He must be like butter. That's right. 8-2 is your final. Bottom two, Michael Tucker, peace. Takes Ishmael Valdez out. Tucker, seventh homer of the year, but get this, his fifth home run in his last 18 at bats. Braves up one zip. Top four, Dodgers runners on first and second one out. Denny Nagel gets Raul Mondesi to ground to the inning, ending 6-4, three double play. Nagel, six innings, gave up two runs. Bottom five, Braves bases loaded. Ryan Klesko up. Klesko hums a single to left. Walt Weiss, Keith Lockhart score. Klesko only hitting 209, but he has 20 ribs this year. Bottom six, Javi Lopez facing his old battery mate Brad Klontz. Show me love up in the club. Javi's ninth homer of the year, seventh in 13 games. It's a three-run shot. Braves up 8-2. And then Dennis Martinez facing Raul Mondesi. Mondesi swinging at air. Mondesi 0 for 3 on the day. He left six batters stranded. And then Martinez, nine days shy of his 43rd birthday, gets Todd Zeal to ground out to second to end the inning. Braves win the game 8-3. Denny Nagel wins for the 14th time in 15. Steve Finley, yep, yep, doubles his ninth two-bagger of the year. Three batters later, Wiley Joyner, long strokes a double to center. Wiley hitting a large 361, two zip after one. Second inning, bases loaded for Joyner. He tells Wagner, uh, you not my uh, daddy. Joyner's sixth career grand slam. Padres up seven zip after two innings. Top five, Paul Wagner still pitching. Now, we're Tuesday, just to remind you. Two on for Sheets, crunk. He repeats his feet from Monday. Three-run home run. Sheets obviously feeling at County Stadium what Tony Gwynn did. Gwynn said, I haven't had any trouble seeing the ball. Brewers combined starters the last two games. 21 hits, 22 runs. It Night. Do not adjust your sets, folks. Todd Helton and Kurt Manwaring, they each double. They told two friends, Ellis Burks and Mike Lansing. And they told two friends and so on. And Vinny Castilla and Dante Bichette both double off the left center field wall. And they told two friends, Daryl Kyle and John Vanderwall. Eight doubles on the nights, all from different Rockies. And stop!
I'm gonna have to fix my prescription. I don't even wear glasses. I've got a headache. Daryl Kyle, however, it wouldn't be all peaches and cream for him. He took a ball right off his knee. And the replay shows it went flush directly on his right knee. He left the game after five innings with a bruised right knee. However, he stuck around long enough for his fourth win. I don't think I'll have any problems, Kyle said. I think I for the Reds after that freaky eye injury on April 2nd. Remember, he was hit in the eye during the pregame infield drills. Casey at the bat, and it's nice to say that. Into the gap. Off who get Irvita. Boone scores, tied at two. And Sean Casey, three for four in the game. Good to see that. Bottom nine, Belinda pitching. Guerrero reaches out, and this one will go all the way to the wall. Sanders, yikes. He took his eye off, trying to see where the runner was. The analysis from the host. Guerrero goes all the way to third. It was ruled a double and an error. Melinda, Vidro, Casey at first. He throws in the dirt. Still, good play by Eddie Tabaji for the fourth. Next batter, Belinda. It's the full count in a 2-2 game, and oh, you got to throw the ball over the plate. It's all over. Stan, it's over. 3-2. The Expos take care of the Rays. Pete Hardish, seven innings, eight hits, and two earned runs as he continues to pitch very well. Does not figure in this decision. All right, this is just great to see Sean Casey back. It really is. To come back after what he sustained earlier. But this kid's got some ability. He, he handles the bat really well for a big guy. He's hit 380 last year in AAA and in AA combined. And, and so he swings the bat really well. Watch this. Uh, and, and he can play a little bit of defense for you. Big guy at first base. Look at him take the wheel two. and spin. Saw the throw to the plate earlier. It wasn't a very good one, but he's a pretty good athlete. Now watch him take this pitch inside out right here and just flip it to left field. He can do a lot of things for you. He can hit and run. Look at that. That's pretty right there. That was Tony Hit and run. That was Tony Gwynn. He can hit and run. He goes in and out with you. He can play you some defense. And I think he's going to hit some, some power also. I, he's going to be a fine player, but it's just more than anything, it's great to see him back in the lineup. Yeah, and he just needed to get a place to play because when he was with Cleveland, obviously with Jim Tomey there, he wasn't going anywhere. Hit 318 in the spring, impressed the Indians enough that the Reds wanted him, and they traded him for Dave Burba. When we come